Coming up tonight, FIFA's president Gianni Infantino says the Cameroon leader Paul Bia will always be remembered for the quality of football infrastructure he has given to the youth. The two met at the Unity Palace this day. Football fans in Cameroon, in Africa and beyond are focusing their attention on Yaoundé, Douala Limbe and Boya for the Chan Total Tournament that kicks off in Yaoundé tomorrow. The details right now. Thanks for watching the 7.30 News on CRTV. I am Edwin Kinzaka in Yaoundé. I have personally observed that most of our fellow citizens no longer comply with the protective measures prescribed by the government. FIFA President Gianni Infantino has congratulated President Paul Bia for the quality of football infrastructure he has donated to the youth. President Bia granted the FIFA boss an audience today at the Unity Palace on the eve of the start of Chan Total. Details with Chief Unity Palace correspondent Ashu Nyente. On the eve of the African Nations Football Championship, the Unity Palace this 15 January 2021 plays host to two eminent personalities of world football. The Supremo of World Football Governing Body FIFA, Gianni Infantino, and the President Pro Tempore of the Confederation of African Football CAF, Constant Omari. After satisfying a more fortified anti-COVID-19 exigency, they are met in front of this imposing palace by the Chief of State Protocol, Simon Pierre Bikele, and the Minister Director of the Civil Cabinet, Samuel Mbondo Ayelo. At this point, the guests are fit to meet Cameroon's sovereign, Paul Bia. Monsieur Gianni Infantino, président de la FIFA, accompagné du président de la CAF. Monsieur le président, Monsieur le président, président soyez le président. Merci beaucoup. Je vous prie passer. This audience represents the diplomatic kickoff given by President Paul Bia for the competition that rumbles up on Saturday, January 16. A competition he wished for and did all to make it happen. For 45 minutes, the head of state, assisted here by the minister, deputy director of the civil cabinet, Oswald Babuke, and the bosses of football's powerhouses, sit through a wide range of issues with emphasis on the development of the sport and the Shan competition, which is imminent. We were discussing about this with President Bia, about football development, more uh, generally about the role the Cameroon has to play in uh, not only African but world football because Cameroon for all football lovers in the world is uh, the essence of, uh, of, of football, uh, of, uh, of dreams, of uh, uh, somebody coming from uh, uh, maybe a smaller footballing country becoming suddenly a big football country. Uh, this is the fairy tale of, uh, of football that Cameroon has written in the past and that we want to write again in the future. The FIFA president, also accompanied by Cameroon's local football icon, Samuel Etofis, FECA Ford president, Sedum Bombo Joya, is short of words to thank President Paul Bia for the quality of football stadiums the country has given to the youth. The infrastructure in, in Cameroon uh, has made incredible steps forward. Today, it is, uh, uh, and it will be even more so next year with the organization of the African Cup of Nations, state of the art. Um, it's important in a period of, uh, of economic crisis, of a pandemic, to think about as well the use, to think about the people, to think about what makes the hearts of people in Cameroon vibrate, and this is football. And therefore, to invest in football, to invest in football infrastructure, is uh, extremely positive and I thanked uh, and congratulated President Bia for that. Uh, it is certainly visionary. It is uh, for the future, for the use, because our use uh, in Cameroon needs to believe in something. And they need to believe that it's not absolutely necessary to be 
leading the country and even the continent when you are 12, 13, 14, 15 years old, but that you can stay here, you can develop here, you can become a professional here. And then, of course, if you become like uh, Samuel Eto'o, you will go to uh, Inter Milan or, uh, or Real Madrid or uh, Barcelona or the other big clubs, obviously. In recognition of their role in the popularization of football, President Paul Bia makes this present of the legendary pipe to the officials who reciprocate with football souvenirs and memorabilia. And it is difficult to suppress the urge of taking a souvenir shot with the head of state. Faire partie de l'équipe de la FIFA. De la sélection mondiale. C'est un transfert hein, qui, qui nous coûtera cher, mais... Merci. Ça, c'est pas Messi, c'est Bia. Numéro 9. It is with lighter spirits that the football officials take leave of the Inter Palace to prepare for the first major international football tournament in 2021. I'm joined now in the studio by the Chief Unity Palace correspondent, Dr. Ashu Nyente. Good evening, Ashu Nyente. Good evening, Moki. No. Thank you for having me. The African Nations Championship will kick off tomorrow in Yaoundé and uh, will also be played in Douala and Limbe. We should be talking about the major achievements for Cameroon President Paul Bia. Definitely, uh, Mokihi will love last, last best. And the organization of the Shan President Paul Bia has had the last laugh. What have the naysayers not said about the competition? Many cast doubts on the ability of Cameroon to host this competition. But President Paul Bia, like Alexander the Great, has been going from conquest to conquest. He's a major organizer of victories. He was steadfast, methodic, to ensure that Cameroon holds this competition after all. What has the president not done? Look at the road infrastructure in the city like Douala, the east and west entrances into the city of Douala. Look at the hospital infrastructure in Yaoundé, in Douala, in Limbe, in Boya. But above all, just take a look at the state of football infrastructure, the stadiums that have been built in this country, state of the art. And I'm not the one saying so, it is Gianni Infantino the president of FIFA who said that in his own words. What the president has done is exceptional. It is visionary. It is fabulous. Even in very difficult economic and health circumstances, President Paul Bia has still been able to pull this through. If Cameroon is able to host the shant today, there is no doubt, Moki, the entire credit goes to the president of Cameroon, President Paul Bia. His commitment is unrivaled. The investments are simply mouth-watering. And what is most interesting is that he does all of this quietly, silently. You know, only empty vessels make the loudest noise. But for President Paul Bia, actions speak louder than words. Paul Bia has joined the French philosopher, Francois-Marie Arouet, called Voltaire, who said, when I speak, I act. Yes, because the president's word is neither nebulous, calamitous, nor is it idle. His talk is not poop poop. It is not blah blah, to use this popular expression. The president's word is golden. When he says, he does. And did I hear you say, Moki, that we have better sports infrastructure? Better is not good enough because the best is yet to come. The world will be marveled. They will be in awe when Cameroon will host the AFCON to take place next year. Already, football pundits are talking of Cameroon being capable of hosting a competition as big as the World Cup. This is because of the vision, the savoir faire, and savoir edge of the leader of this country, President Paul Bia. Ashunyanti, from what you say and in your point of view, from what I gather, President Paul Bia is somebody Cameroonians can rely on to make things happen. Boki, I tell you what, President Paul Bia is a blessing to this country. Cameroonians, we are lucky. We are made because we have Paul Bia the helm of the state calf. This president is our greatest marksman. He is our principal goal scorer. He has always taken us out of very difficult situations. First, because of his immense wisdom. Second, because of his aura and international clout. Those who meet President Paul Bia for the first time are out and bow in reverence, in respect for his profound knowledge and civility. 
The president of FIFA visited President Paul Bia today. You needed to have seen the pleasure of Gianni Infantino meeting President Paul Bia. I was at the Unity Palace. I saw things for myself, Moki. The president of FIFA gave President Bia a jersey as a memorabilia, as a symbolic transfer of President Paul Bia to the world FIFA football team. On that jersey was written number nine, and then Infantino insisted, this is not Messi, this is Bia. Do you know why he said that? Because Messi is considered as the greatest football player on earth. But Paul Bia is in a class of his own. He is one notch higher. He is without comparison. How many heads of state have that privilege? When you have a head of state with such stature, with such candor, such pedigree, and with such subtlety, what else can you be asking for, Moki? It is like you are in a ship facing a tempest toast, and you get up and remember the name and the track record of the captain, and you go back to sleep, knowing that whatever happens, the captain will rudder the ship to safer shores. That is a case of Cameroon with President Paul Bia. Fellow citizens, do not be weary. The ship of Cameroon is in safe hands. Have confidence in the captain. His name is Paul Bia. The Chief Unity Palace Correspondent, Ashunyente. You're welcome. Thanks for coming. Now, this communique on the extreme instructions of the President of the Republic, His Excellency Paul Bia, the Prime Minister, Head of Government, Chief Dr. Joseph John Gute, shall on Saturday, 16 January 2021, from 3.30 p.m. at the Omni Sports Stadium in Yaoundé, preside over the opening ceremony of the African Nations Football Championship, the Chan. He signed the Director of Cabinet at the Prime Minister's Office, Balingeli Confiance Ebune. At the Dwala side has been one of the major curiosities of Chan. Hundreds of volunteers, committee members, and media organs have been struggling to obtain the pass to the different playgrounds. Rene Kache reports from Dwala. The Conbatan House, situated slightly on the edge of the administrative headquarters at Bonanja. This is where the Confederation of African Football CAF has set up its accreditation center for the Dwala side. An influx of volunteers, members of the different commissions, as well as media men and women, have all converged to scramble for the precious ticket called accreditation that gives access to the stadiums. The importance of this precious document could be clearly seen through the hustle and bustle amongst those who have come for it. Officials of CAF media team in charge of the exercise say accreditation will be given only to those who qualify, and that during the tournament, COVID-19 barrier measures will be strictly observed to avoid the propagation of the virus. Amongst those struggling to obtain accreditation are 400 journalists drawn from different parts of the world who will be covering the event. Less than 24 hours to the launch of the African Nations Championship, hospitals in Cameroon are taking additional measures to stop the spread of the coronavirus. Alice Mbe visited some hospitals in the capital city. Her report. At the military hospital in Yaoundé, medical equipments have been installed. We have set up a special service for emergency cases, taking into consideration the COVID-19 pandemic. We have trained our personnel on quality services. Meanwhile, at the Yaoundé Central Hospital, a special clean-up campaign has been carried out. Here we have taken special note on sanitary conditions. We have a blood ban service. We equally have a VIP service and many other equipment ready to receive patients. The Yaoundé Emergency Center believes they have the capacity to stand any case. We got all the equipment to carry out COVID-19 tests if patients are brought here. We have reanimation equipment and even medicalized ambulances in case of any emergency. Sanitary measures and final touches have also been assured at the level of the stadiums. Host Cameroon will be aiming for a good start in the African Nations Championship when they open the tournament against Zimbabwe tomorrow. The Intermediate Lions are galvanized by fans and officials for a better performance. Mali vs Burkina Faso will be the second game in Yaoundé. We have details with Daniel Ekonde. Cameroon under Martin Tungumpile are keen to see off a tightly contested showdown at the Amadou Ajo Stadium on Saturday. 
The opening game against Zimbabwe is a comeback of Ntungu Pile, who led the Intermediate Lions to their ever-best quarterfinals in Rwanda four years ago. 2018's disappointing group stage berth means the Lions, despite a draw and two defeats in the Prishan tournament, are upbeat to tie this one down against Zimbabwe. Experienced are former Esperance of Tunis forward Yannick Njeng and 2017 Afghan winner Jacques Zoua. But Cameroon won't find it easy breaking Zimbabwe as the Warriors look set to start their Sif Shan campaign on the front foot. They will be banking on their impressive form during the qualifiers, where they scored 10 goals in four qualifying games. The second tie pitting Mali and Burkina Faso will largely lean on the former. Off from a fantastic run in the Western Zone A qualifiers, the Eagles of Mali are aiming to put that form to a good use when they meet Burkina Faso at 8 p.m. at the Amadwaijo Stadium. CRTV has exclusive broadcast rights for Chan, and Cameroon public broadcaster is not taking the opportunity for granted. Qualified men or manpower has been deployed to all towns that will be hosting the games. Beatrice Goom has the rest of that story. The allowed laughter expressed their satisfaction. His serenity tells of a man who has everything under control. These CRTV radio and sports and entertainment officials have visited the different studios and watched the technicians do the sound quality testing. Our signals are clear. Uh, we're doing the last minute testing to ensure that on D-Day uh, we have no slight hitch whatsoever. This time around we have two fly cases that are, are also deployed for this competition and all of them produce signals in high definition. Cameroonians will be on page with the games, on TV, via radio, or on the social engine, they say. On a daily basis, you have uh, Shan News, uh, Shan Express, those are programs we're bringing on. We have what we call a Shan Scanner. A Shan Scanner is what brings you uh, the totality of what happened during the day. We have the newscast in the morning, which is Shan Matin. We have Shan Express uh, by 11 o'clock. We have the debrief of the, of the day, just immediately after the match. CRTV's wish is to give a minute-by-minute -minute coverage of the games on all CRTV platforms with high sound quality that will leave the audience wanting for more. The Cameroon Radio Television is therefore set to give a maximum coverage of the African Nations Championship that begins tomorrow. The teaser was given yesterday during a live broadcast on all of its platforms named Chan Show under the watchful eyes of the Director General Sharon Dungu. Carlos Gray was there. The effervescence that comes with hosting the 2020 African Nations Football Championship was evident last evening at the CRTV Production Centre Balatu in Yaoundé. The special program, Shan Show, was at the centre of this colourful ceremony, co-presented by Diane Gassa and Romia Tracy. The media icons used 120 minutes to give a foretaste of what Cameroonians hope to live during the Continental Tournament. These under the supervision of CRTV's Director General Charles Ndongo. Present was CRTV's board chair, Rene Emmanuel Sadi, who lauded the presentation and encouraged the entire team to redouble their efforts for a perfect coverage of the Continental Show. Also present was the Minister of Sports and Physical Education, Professor Nassis Mwelekombi, and a huge audience. The colorful event, filled with joy, creativity, and heartfelt moments, was animated by CRTV's orchestra. The Minister of Communication, Board Chair of CRTV, expressed satisfaction on the professionalism of the public broadcaster in relation with the coverage of the Chan Total that kicks off tomorrow. Rene Manuel Sadi was speaking at the end of the special program that was yesterday. We have details with Gilbert Ongene. This TV program, dubbed Shan Show, sets the pace for the kickoff of the sixth edition of the African Football Championship. It brought together men and women of Timba and Caliber concerned with different aspects of the football competition. We have witnessed a great program tonight. CRTV is doing its best to put this competition in the limelight. I must salute this wonderful initiative from the management of CRTV. The state of Cameroon, under the stewardship of President Paul Bia, Minister René Emmanuel Sadi maintains, has spared no effort to make sure that Cameroon be more than ready for this competition. Bien. Le président de la République, son Paul Bia. 
Behind all this is a man of vision, President Paul Bia. He has done his best to provide ultra-modern infrastructure fit to host the Shan and other future competitions. The stage is now set. Let the football show begin. The Yaoundé City Council is setting up a fan zone for the African Nations Championship. Eight giant screens will be also be placed at different parts of the city to enable the population to watch the games closer to their homes. Ebenezer Kanga has the rest of that story. Intense work is going on on the esplanade of the Yaoundé City Council to set up a fan zone for the Shan Total 2021. The fan zone is being set up by the Yaoundé City Council. It will consist, among others, of a podium car from which artists will animate fans who choose to watch the games there. The governor of the central region, accompanied by the mayor of the city of Yaoundé, visited the site to appraise the work. The fan zone, first of all, brings in our culture. Secondly, it has to portray the, the various countries who, which are participating. It has to bring in ambience for those who are not able to attend the live match at the, at the Amadou Aijo Stadium. Apart from the fan zone, the Yaoundé City Council is also setting up eight giant screens in different parts of the capital city to enable the city's dwellers watch the games close to their homes. Moreover, the city council has rid Yaoundé of garbage and embellished the capital with a fresh coat of paint on these streets. A huge sensitization campaign on the respect of COVID-19 barrier measures during the period of Chan Total has been organized in Yaoundé. The initiative is that of the Minister of Youth Affairs and Civic Education, Munra Futsu, and his colleague of sports. We have details with Victor Siga. The Continental Football Bonanza, Shan, kicks off tomorrow and the goal is to keep it COVID-19 free. The sensitization campaign, baptized civic and patriotic Chan without COVID-19, was out to sound loud. The need to strictly respect the coronavirus preventive measures. Cameroon will uh, live... Uh... And very important moment, that's the chant. Uh, considering the context, we need that uh, young people mobilize themselves in a patriotic manner. Touring some streets of the nation's capital, these youth of the mobile mass animation team displayed Cameroon's team spirit while distributing preventive gadgets to the population. What we'll do is to deploy our mobile mass, mobile animation teams with the community media all over the quarters and villages. For the opening match between host country Cameroon and Zimbabwe, one of the conditions to access the stadium will be the compulsory wearing of face mask. you once again to put on your face masks, to wash your hands regularly, and to consult a physician or any other health personnel if you notice any symptoms. This is the only way to save lives and to curb the spread of the virus. One of the barrier measures to limit the spread of COVID-19 during the African Nations Championship is a mandatory wearing of the face mask. How will that be regulated in stadia across the country? Bodin Sama is at the Public Health Emergency Center with his guest, Dr. Ewa Sama. Hello, Bodwin. Good evening. Good evening, good evening to you. When the African Nations Championship officially kicks off for tomorrow, Saturday, one of these outline barrier measures, which happens to do with the wearing of a face mask in the different stadia, will strictly be respected. And how would that be respected in the different uh, tribunes of, for the different stadiums where the matches will be played? We discuss that tonight with our guest, Dr. Ewasama. He is an epidemiologist. Good evening to you, Doctor. 
Good evening, well doing. The mandatory wearing of a face mask in the different stadia will officially begin tomorrow, Saturday, with the uh, start of the African Nations Championship. Explain to us how will that be followed up? Uh, for the African Championship, uh, we like to, to tell to the public that uh, the, the world will be watching us, will be watching Cameroon. And uh, it is important to provide to the CAF official the, uh, the evidence that the wearing of face masks as well as other barrier measures are respected during the, 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 the matches. Which means no spectator is allowed into the stadium without the wearing of a face mask? Of course, no spectator is allowed in the stadium without the wearing of a face mask. And uh, uh, secondly, it is important that even during the match, people keep wearing their face mask because we observe that, that some spectators uh, they will wear the face mask when entering the stadium and during the match they will, they, 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 they will stop observing the, uh, that measure. So it is important we keep observing the measure during the, during the match. Thank you so much, Doctor, for all those details. Just to remind our viewers that from tomorrow, Saturday, on the 730 newscast, we will be uh, reporting live from uh, the nation's economic capital, Douala, and at times, too, from uh, the seaside resort town of Olimbe in the southwest region throughout the African Nations Championship, where we'll be giving our view viewers regular updates as concerns of uh, measures put in place to limit the spread of COVID-19 in Douala, Bipanda, Douala, Japoma, and equally in Group D in Limbe. Back to you. Thanks very much, Bordwin Sama, and we are waiting for those feats when you get to Dualan to the southwest region. Now, this news just coming in. Now, the courts of arbitration for sports has annulled the election of the current FECA Food Executive Bureau led by Sedu Mombon Joya. This comes after an appeal filed by the Olympic of Meganga against the decision of the Chamber of Arbitration and Conciliation of the National Olympic Committee on April 11, 2019. In the decision signed today by the Court of Arbitration for Sports, Fekafoot, will have to pay damages worth some 10,000 Swiss francs. We shall be giving you details of this story in subsequent editions of our news. The special plan for the reconstruction of the Far North region has taken form. The draft outline of the program, ordered by President Paul Beer, was discussed at the interministerial meeting chaired by Prime Minister Joseph John Guti. Christian Chatham reports that focus is on infrastructure destroyed by Boko Haram and economic development. The special plan for the reconstruction and development of the Far North region, instructed by the head of state, is a move to rebuild damaged infrastructures and uplift the economy of the region. The draft development program presented during the interministerial meeting has four pillars. The first targets the reparation of damages caused by the Boko Haram sect, as well as the repeated floods in the region. The second pillar concerns the development of the economy of the region. The third pillar aims at improving the resilience of the population of the far north to climate change. The execution of the first phase of the plan is expected to begin in 2021. At this stage, we have uh, roughly 150 billion already earmark to do uh, this uh, important uh, operation. And the sectors that are going to be of uh, great importance for us uh, are infrastructure, certainly. We need to finalize the roads because they are essential for the development of our uh, country and this part of uh, the country. Rural development, agricultural rural development, uh, fishery, as well as uh, 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 energy. The special plan for the development of the Far North region will be executed within a period of five years and alongside regular projects of the investment budget. Military honors have been given to the late Major General Yumba Jean René in Yaoundé. The 81 year old was posthumously awarded the Medal of the Cross of the Military Valor in Order of the Nation Cameroon. Joe Chemontion Tuseke reports. Coffin bearers, all soldiers, were solemn, uniform and dignifying, all in honor of Major General Yumba Jean René. Trent at Sensi Military Academy in France in 1959, Major General Yumba Jean René rendered serveless services for 57 years. He built the first ever flyover in Cameroon at Zamangwe, on the outskirts of Yaoundé, 
having trained as a road construction engineer from the Polytechnic Institute in Versailles, France, the late Major General Yumba Jean René has led several construction projects of roads and bridges across Cameroon. The Minister of Defense and his close aides paid their last respect to the late soldier. His biography, presented by Major General Hector Marie Chemo, spoke volumes of his humility, hard work and respect for military ethics, which Major General Chemo described as a source of inspiration to the younger generation. The late Major General Yumba Jean René, survived by his wife and unique son, will be led to rest tomorrow in his birthplace, Conga, in Puma subdivision in the littoral region. May his soul rest in peace. Before we leave you on the extreme instructions of the President of the Republic, His Excellency Paul Bia, the Prime Minister, Head of Government, Chief Dr. Joseph John Gute shall on Saturday, 16 Feb or January 2021 from 3.30 p.m. at the Omnisport Stadium in Yaoundé preside over the opening ceremony of the African Nations Football Championship, the CHAN, to design the Director of Cabinet and Prime Minister's Office, Baligeli Confiance Ebune. That's where we end the 7.30 news on CRTV. The next news is coming up in 30 minutes with uh, Ata Badino Ma. I am Edwin Kinzika Yaoundé. Thank you for watching. Despite our efforts, COVID-19 plunged many families into mourning and seriously hampered the functioning of our economy and society.